What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more R slash you might have bird hole. And if you love a Reddit story, don't forget to click that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. We post all the time. <laughs> so let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes from Am I the Arsehole Joke Mistress? Titled, Am I the Arsehole for Ruining the Family Vacation by Refusing to Go to Dinner After My Husband Laughed at His Cousin's Joke and Telling Him to Take His Mistress Instead? I found out after we were already married that it's very common for the older generation of men in my husband's family to keep mistresses as long as they're discreet about it and don't have any outside babies. We went on vacation with my husband's family including his sister, cousins, and their spouses. My sister-in-law needed to get some new clothes because she was supposed to leave earlier than the rest of us, but decided to stay. While we were shopping, the shop assistant was flirting with my husband. His cousin James made jokes about adding her to my husband's collection of girls in every country and how he always said a leopard never changes his spots and he knew marriage couldn't stop my husband. My husband and his other male cousins thought it was the funniest thing ever. I didn't find it so funny and neither did his sister who told James to shut up. In the evening, we were supposed to go for dinner and my husband noticed I wasn't getting ready. So he asked me to hurry up. I told him I didn't want to go. We had an argument where he was saying James was just joking. I told him I didn't find it funny and he could take his mistress to dinner instead. He kept insisting he didn't have a mistress and that James was just making a dumb joke and he was sorry for laughing but I refused to budge. In the end, none of the other girls went to dinner with them. We all ended up going somewhere together and wouldn't let them come with us. For the rest of the vacation, my sister-in-law insisted we would treat it like a girl's trip and the boys could do whatever they wanted without us. My husband was pissed at me for overreacting to a joke and ruining the family vacation, especially since James apologized too, but things didn't go back to normal. Was I the asshole? Now, come on, we face a lot of these situations and that's absolutely not a joke. It's a disgusting thing to say and for your husband to laugh along with it would automatically make you not the asshole, in my opinion. And let's not forget all the other women decided to go with you for di to dinner afterwards. That just says it validates what you're saying in this situation. Not that you needed validation, but it just says a lot, doesn't it really? But Little Eve 77 says that joking about a mistress is a deeply disrespectful thing to do. It sounds like you weren't the only women fed up with this kind of banter. It is a shame the holiday wasn't what any of you planned it to be, but you're not the arsehole for being upset. I will say this, now that you're home, perhaps it's time to move past it. Make it abundantly clear that these kind of jokes are not tolerated, but let go. If it happens again, then it might be time to worry about the people in your life and reevaluate things. But until then, enjoy life. Good luck. Essex Catwoman says not the asshole. And good on you women supporting each other. Adultery isn't a joke. And if your husband thinks it is, he has to think again. When you found out about the tradition, did you discuss it with your husband? What did you agree? Driftwood says not the asshole, but culturally, I'll bet if you took a discreet lover or your ladies joked over having one join you on your ladies time out, then he wouldn't be laughing either. Live life 30 to the full who says not the asshole. This is men being pigs. You don't joke about cheating. I would have a big talk with the husband. And one more from Cat Anne 119 who says not the asshole and quotes in the end, none of the other girls went to dinner with them. We all ended up going somewhere together and wouldn't let them come with us. For the rest of the vacation, my sister-in-law insisted we would treat it like a girl's trip and the boys could do whatever they wanted without us. And then says, so all the other females on the trip think the exact same as you and your husband still thinks you're overreacting. I think he needs to learn to read the room better. If half the group are pissed about a joke that they refuse to be near the other half that thought it was funny, you've got to question the appropriateness of the joke. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in the same situation as OP? How would you react to this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next one. And our next three comes from Not The Handyman 987 titled, Am I the Arsehole for Refusing to Help With Brother-in-Law's House? I'm a pretty handy guy. My dad had a home remodeling business and I worked for him all through high school and college and even some after that when he was really busy. 
My wife, Susan, and I basically renovated our whole house during lockdown. My wife has a very bad habit of volunteering me to help without asking me first. We have thought about this in the past and I have told her I will not do it in the future. My wife sells real estate and she has been looking for a house for her brother, Paul, and his family. The housing market here is insane, so finding something they can afford has been a real challenge. In late August, my wife announced she finally found a place and wanted me to take a look. Susan talks about what a great deal the house is because it needs a little work. The house is a mess. There is tons of work, including redoing the kitchen and bathrooms, fixing drywall, and a lot more. I asked him who was going to get to do the work, thinking I could recommend some guys that used to work with my dad. Susan and Paul look at each other. Then she says that she is sure the two of you can do it. Well, first of all, me and him would, would mean me, as Paul has no home improvement skills at all. I just said, no way. Paul asked me what I meant and I told him that there was a ton of work needed to be done and I wasn't signing on for it. I'm not spending every weekend for months working on someone else's house. Susan and I argue about it, but I refuse to budge. Susan says, fine. If I won't help, then she and Paul will do it themselves. I should say that while Susan did help with our renovation, particularly things like painting, I did the bulk of the work. I know my wife and I know she is thinking that I will end up giving in and helping. I warn her that I mean it. I'm not helping. She says she and Paul can do it. Paul buys the house. Well, it goes about how I expected, meaning very badly. They had estimated it would take two months to make the house livable enough for the family to move in. Six weeks in and they have made little progress on the meat of the house. My wife is getting more and more irritated at me. I never bring up the house and I refuse to engage when Susan brings it up. I'm taking next week off of work and I told Susan I would take care of our house and kids. Typically, we split up chores while I was off. She hit the roof. She told me that if I was off for a week, then I should be helping with her brother's house. She brought up that they had two weeks to make it livable or he's going to have to pay both the mortgage and rent for his apartment and he can't afford that. I replied that I told her from the beginning that I wasn't helping and I meant it. My wife has now not speaking to me since, according to her, I hate her family. This is a hill I'm willing to die on. However, I know that her brother is the one that is going to get hurt. Am I the asshole for refusing to help? Now, this is a very simple one to me. You set your boundaries from the very start that you said, no way, you know, Paul hasn't got any DIY skills at all and it should be left to you. And so you're like, nope, I don't want none of that. And you just want the time for yourself, which I can't blame you for. You can't buy a property expecting someone else to fix it up for you. That's just not the way to go about it. So it's 100% not the asshole to me. Your wife's a huge asshole for volunteering then still going and still convincing Paul to buy it under the assumption that you you will give in eventually. And then after trying to twist things on you saying you hate her family and it's like, no, you don't hate her family. You just don't like being volunteered to do shit that you said you didn't want to do to begin with. Whew, not the asshole. And we're going to start with Crafty Edition 9105 who says my wife has a very bad habit of volunteering me to help people without asking me. Not the asshole, OP. So Lukey Queen says not the asshole. Her brother is a grown up who heard you say very clearly that you weren't signing on for this. If he chose to ignore you, even at the behest of his sister, that's on him as much as it is on her. 5NL007 says not the asshole. Why does your wife think it's okay to think she can volunteer your time? It's time for them to man up and pay someone to finish the basics of the house so they can move in. That's a lot of work from the sound of it. It's not being mean or hating on family, but you have to value your time unless brother-in-law would like to pay for your service as a skilled professional. Laughing Baguette says not the asshole. Your wife is in real estate. She should understand what a pain in the ass it would be to fix a house that is not livable, especially for someone who isn't a full-time contractor. Charles Van Medorian says, buying the house knowing it needs a certain degree of work means you have to have the money to buy the house plus pay for the work needing to be done. If he didn't bother to work those costs into the final sales or mortgage total, that's on him. I don't know how your wife is equating to you not taking on the job. You literally said you wouldn't do as you hating her family, but whatever. Sounds like she expected you to cave and you're not. Good on you. That's a huge ask of you. And they're acting very entitled. Environmental ads is not the asshole. Her fault for not discussing and assuming you'd give in. That's taking advantage of you. They need to pay you if they want it fixed. Simple as that. 
And one more from such lovely lilacs who says, not the asshole, I'd be willing to die on this hill too. You up front that you refuse to help. Reasonable. You offer to give some recommendations for people to do the work. Also reasonable. Your wife thought she would manipulate you into doing this and can't handle it that you're standing your ground. None of this is your problem. You were nothing but clear about your intentions. Your wife is the one who took the liberty of offering your time and talents when she had no business doing so. Now she has to pick up the pieces. If she is willing to destroy your relationship over this, then sorry, but there wasn't much of a relationship to begin with. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in this situation? Maybe you have before. Maybe someone's volunteered your time. How did you react to that? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from T.A. Wolf of Watts and says, am I the asshole for reminding my husband's friend that I make three times his salary? My 30 female husband, 32 male, has a friend, Mike, 36 male, who fancied himself the Wolf of Wall Street. Mike got some money when his grandpa passed away, 150K, and blew it all very quickly in a get-rich-quick schemes, as well as trying out day trading. He's currently working in the call center while trying to make it big. He has no inheritance money left. The issue is that Mike is really bad at making financial decisions, and so he keeps losing money but that doesn't stop him from repeating over and over that next year he'll make his first million. He's been saying this for five years. Bit of a Dell boy by the sounds of it. I wouldn't mind his attitude as much except he constantly belittles me and my husband. Looking down on us, looking down on us for our car when he doesn't have one or saying that smart people work for themselves as a dig to our jobs. He finally made money last week, 2K and came over for dinner. He was on a huge high from making money and was more arrogant than usual, talking about how he was going to buy a really expensive car and wouldn't be caught dead with the car we own. He then kept saying, I made 2K in 15 minutes. Nobody else at this table can say that. He then proceeded to try and give us financial advice, which consisted of him putting down mine and my husband's jobs. He makes the same amount as my husband and way less than me. I got fed up with his attitude and said, Mike, we didn't make 2K in 15 minutes, but I do make 100K a year, which is about three times what you make, and I never blew 150K. So I really don't think you're in a place to advise on finances. He stormed out and said I was an arsehole. <laughs> My husband thinks I should have been nicer since I know how he is. Am I the arsehole? And straight away, Knowing how someone is isn't an excuse for that person to be an arsehole. This guy's an arsehole, you are not. But I've got to say, I wonder what this guy's qualities are, you know, his endearing qualities that make you actually like him, that makes you want him to have him at your dinner table because he sounds insufferable from this post. But Sefer32 says, not the arsehole. You know how he is. Now he knows how you are. Let that be his fucking problem. Tralfa Midorian says, why are you friends with this person? Not the arsehole. Am I the arsehole? PS5 says, and not the arsehole. He got a reality check and he didn't like it. Don't dish if you can't take it in return. Typical bully behavior. Shaman Bob says, not the arsehole. You know how he is, is a phrase used by people to excuse bad behavior. It's not okay and we need to collectively stop accepting that shitty behavior is okay because that's just how they are. Guess what? That's how they remain until people start calling them out on their bull. Good for you for OP for shutting it down. He deserved it and maybe, hopefully, will be a bit more humble moving forward. And one more from Jin BB who says, not the arsehole, I wish I had 150k. I could pay off my student loans and car and then start saving for a down payment for a house. I can't believe how lucky those money wasters get. Edit, I didn't realize me stating that what I would do would be so triggering. I'm not offering financial advice and where I live, 150k is not enough to buy a two bedroom house. Now, what do you guys make of this one? What would you do if someone started boasting at your dinner table like that? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account titled, Am I the Arsehole for Telling My Daughter That She's Not Model Material? Throwaway, I-45 female, have a daughter named Lynn, 18 female. A bit of background about me. When I was around Lynn's age, I really wanted to become a model. My mom was very supportive of my dream, maybe too supportive when I look back on it. Anyone who's been in the modeling industry knows it can be a brutal environment. You need to have very thick skin in order to progress in that line of work. 
I definitely wasn't mentally prepared to take on all the pressure and criticism that comes with being a model. I struggled with an eating disorder, depression and body image issues as a result. I still struggle to have confidence in myself to this day because of it. Even though I know my mum was just trying to be supportive, I wish she had been more honest with me about the industry. The incident. Yesterday, Lynn told me that she wanted to pursue being a model like I did. I immediately started thinking back to when I had this exact conversation with my mum. It's also important to mention that, while Lynn is a beautiful girl, she's definitely not what most modeling agencies would go for. Most people don't make it in the modeling world. The standards are extremely high and strict. Lynn is also very sensitive when it comes to her physical appearance. I'm terrified that she'd go through all the hardships that I experienced. I don't want my daughter's confidence to be ripped apart by some dick modeling agent. I want her to be happy and content with the way she is, no matter what. This is the conversation that followed. I said, well, honey, you know being a model isn't exactly all it's cracked up to be. Lynn replied, I know it's not easy, but I'm certain that I can do it if I work really hard. I sighed and said, Lynn, you know that I love you very much and I want to be honest with you. She said, uh, okay. The modeling world is very strict and they have very high standards that most people can't meet. To which she replied, what? Are you saying I can't make it as a model? I said, no, honey, it's not that. I don't think you're model material. I don't want you to be hurt like I was. Lynn just stared at me and I could tell she was crushed by what I said. I desperately tried to explain what I meant, but she got up and locked herself in her room. She hasn't come out and she refuses to talk to me at all. I feel so awful. I was just trying to watch out for her and protect her. My husband called me a massive jerk and said I should have been more supportive. Am I the asshole? Now, I'm going to have to come at this from someone who doesn't know about the modeling industry at all. I've heard it can be pretty brutal, but I don't honestly, but I don't honestly know. And, you know, you see on adverts these days that modeling's changed quite a bit in in the last decade or so in some ways, not in all ways. And it look and from Opie's age, who is 45 now, it would have been some years ago when they was modeling. And hopefully it has changed in a positive manner since then. But going back, I can see that, you know, their heart's in the right place. They're concerned for their daughter. But I think the way they went about it was probably the wrong way. The line, I don't think you're model material. If someone said that to me, it would say into my head that, that I'm not good looking enough or I'm not suitable in that way to be a model. I wouldn't be thinking about the mental stuff, you know, about the pressure that's put on you or anything like that. It would be immediately on my looks because of a model. But I may be totally wrong there. So I think the way you said it would make you the arsehole. But Andante79 says, Gentle, you're the arsehole. Your message was kind. Your delivery was not. That's better than my... That's probably better than I could have put it in one line there. You could have told her about your experience and what you struggled with. Instead of saying you can't do this, you could have said, I'm excited for you. Here is what it's like. Fool me once, shame on you, says you're the arsehole. I'm around your age and modeled as a teenager as well. First of all, standards have changed drastically in the last 30 years, as have cultural norms. And while the modeling industry is still challenging, there is a lot more room for unusual, unique looks and even different body types than there used to be. But that's not even the issue here. Here is the issue and why you're the arsehole. You claim to be worried about your daughter being sensitive and easily hurt, but then you literally discouraged her by explaining yourself in possibly the least objective, cruelest and most hurtful way possible that left your daughter with no real sense that you cared for her at all, but rather you thought she wasn't good enough. Who does that? Where you could have laid out the incredibly specific, often unrealistic standards of the industry. Most models don't even need to be particularly pretty, but have to be unusually tall, thin, and have particular bone structure. Basically, they act as a human coat hangers. And explain how dehumanizing a lot of the work and interactions are. And that it's not about trying hard and about being aware that wouldn't always be treated kindly, listened to, respected, etc. Basically explaining that it is the industry that's the problem and that you have concerns about her involvement in it and how it would affect her. Instead, you chose words that made it sound as though she was not good enough to be a part of it. Saying you're not modeling material has so many negative connotations about her that I'm just dumbfounded that was in any way a kind thing to say to a struggling teen. So yeah, you're the asshole. You just hurt and broke her heart and rejected her before she even had a chance for any modeling agent to do it. Pat James 904 says you're the arsehole. Models in this day and age come in all shapes, sizes, and looks. The best path would be to take her to a modeling agency, let them determine whether or not she has what it takes. 
If they turn her down, she would have gotten an objective opinion. Kitty Snowpants says you're the arsehole. You know you basically told your daughter that you don't think she's pretty enough to model, right? How could that not make you the arsehole? And one more from SleepSignal02 says soft you're the arsehole. Your intentions were good and coming from a place of experience. However, poor execution and wrong wording. Try explaining why you said what you said and your experience instead of high expectations most people can't meet. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Snappy Jules titled, Am I the arsehole for giving my kid his sister's toy after she rudely refused to share? I have two kids, Alexia, 16 female, and Ashton, 9 male. Alexia has always collected webkins from the time she was very young. She has easily over 200 of them. If you don't know, there's a website slash game tied to the animals as well as you have a digital copy of every animal you get. Despite her older age, Alexia is still using the digital site to play with the toys. I think Alexia should focus on activities more geared towards a teenager, but I'm not going to stop her playing with the webkins. I do, however, think that she should share her toys with her brother when he wants to play with them as a little boy would want to do. Alexia, however, completely refused to share her webkins with Ashton and has told me I can buy him his own. It all came to a head today when Ashton was wanting to play with a dragon of Alexia's and she said no and literally ripped it out of his hand. He came to me crying and I just decided enough is enough. I'm tired of this rivalry between them. Since Alexia is just not going to budge in her rudeness, I told Ashton he could have the dragon. To say Alexia was pissed is an understatement. She told me I have to give her the dragon back because she paid for it. She's been funding for her whole toy addiction for a while now. I acknowledge that she paid for it, but she's living in my house. And it isn't fair to her brother to have hundreds of toys in plain sight he can't play with. I didn't say she had to give them to him, only that she has to share. This apparently is still unreasonable. My husband firmly sides with me, adding that if she wants a toy dragon, she can buy her own, where Ashton can't, and that's why we're asking her to share. I'm not sure why it matters since she has the dragon on her webkin site, so why she even needs the physical one is beyond me. I see that as a compromise so that both children are happy, but Alexia remains incensed. Am I the arsehole? Now, there's no way you're not going to be the arsehole in this situation. You said your daughter pays for these toys pretty much herself. This collection is clearly a hobby of hers that she's very passionate about. And you came up with a bullshit excuse that she's under your roof so you can basically do what you want. This is setting you up for a toxic relationship in the future with your daughter if you haven't already done that already. I've seen it many times in these stories and where where someone's collecting an item of some sort and then the other person gives it to another child and they damage it and pretty much ruin it. And, you know, it really damages the relationship as well. So that's 100% you're going to be the arsehole. I don't see what you got, what you got against it either. But Al MCK says, So in order to teach her how to share, you stole from your 16-year-old daughter. Yes, I'm sure that will work and she will gladly consider all her property held in common with her little brother who has now learned in turn that if he really wants something of his sister's, all he has to do is cry and you'll get it for him. You're the arsehole. Enjoy playing favorites. Troll from Adorian says, why didn't she already buy her own dragon? And then quotes, she's been funding her whole toy addiction for a while now and then says, you don't like her hobby. This is clear, but if she's paying for her own thing, why is she obligated to share a collection with her brother? She didn't refuse to share. She drew a boundary between her brother and her things. You smothered that. Buy your son his own toys. You're the arsehole. Obadicta says you're the arsehole. You literally stole from your own child. She bought the toy. It belongs to her. You cannot just give it away to your other child whenever you please. Stop with a parental power trip. Screenplay throwaway says you're the arsehole. You have no idea how bad this is going to bite you in the ass for the future, hey? Good fucking luck for the state of your relationship with your daughter in the future. You're going to need it. And one more from Reading Painter who says you're the arsehole. You're literally stealing from your daughter. She paid for it. So what if it's under your roof? That doesn't give you the right to steal her items from her no matter what they are. And frankly, if he sees them and wants to play with them and they're in her room, who cares? He shouldn't be going in her room to take her things and neither should you. You're literally teaching him he can get what he wants if he asks enough and you're teaching him that boundaries mean literally nothing. If you continue this, he's going to think his, his sister's no means absolutely nothing and your daughter will start to resent you. 
Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and for all of today's stories if you choose to share them. A huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today, getting involved in the channel, commenting, liking, everything. You're absolutely awesome. Do not forget that. And I will see you, your cheeky so-and-so, <laughs> in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Boxes are defeating. Purpose always fleeting. I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing. Life is easier concealing. All emotions to the start on your heart going numb. I shouldn't be in drive more. I just wanna feel alive more. I feel hurt all the time, boy. I can't see straight. I've been wrong.